a wall. This is JP Alexander for the Rabbit Dogs Unleashed, and today is Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. And uh, I'm going to continue my uh, my ranking series. It's a bunch of uh, videos I've made about ranking uh, certain films. I've ranked Star Wars films, and I ranked my 10 top uh, high school films. Today I'm going to rank James Bond. Not all James Bond movies. There's 27 James Bond movies in a live television show, so I'm not going to go into all those and rank them. We'll be here all day. I'm going to rank the actors who have played James Bond since uh, since uh, Ian Fleming started to write the, the books. Ian Fleming, uh, as we all probably know, wrote the James Bond books. He created James Bond. Not all of the books. He wrote the books from 19... 53 till 1964 until his death and then uh, some other authorized writers have continued writing uh, James Bond books that have made it into movies so th there's quite a lot of them uh, as you know you know we've been uh, watching James Bond for 58 years we watching James Bond now and uh, the you know the books have been out for for uh, uh, 60 Seven years, I guess it's been. Uh, so I'm going to rank from uh, eight to one. Now you might say, "Oh, I think there's only there's not eight actors who play them." Well, if you really look, you know, into other offshoots, that has been eight actors who play James Bond, and probably some who have done radio shows of James Bond and what have you. I'm not going to go into those. I'm just going to go into the. I'm not going to spend too much time on the bottom two. Uh, just one past them quickly but he, he is my uh, worst to best uh, number eight Barry Nelson 1954 he did the Casino Royale live television show on TV um, I haven't watched the whole thing I'm gonna watch some scenes of it uh, wasn't that good you know as you can imagine um, Casino Royale if you see the movie with Daniel Craig that's probably a little bit of what you know that's about uh, not as well done, obviously. Uh, B Barry Nelson is still the only American who ever played James Bond. And, uh, you know, he wasn't, I guess he wasn't bad. I mean, considering the script at the time and the way it was filmed, it was just, you know, 1954, black and white, you know. You can't tell much about it from the, the bad. It's almost like the Honeymooners episode, kind of. Uh, uh, anyway, three things I think I have to say that you need to play James Bond. You need to play the smarts. You need to convey smartness, intelligence, because James Bond has to outsmart a lot of intelligent people who want to take over the world. So James Bond's got to be very smart, very, you know, high IQ individual. That's one thing. Two, suaveness. He's got to be suave, meaning he's got to, you know, you got to talk to him and the guy's got to Actually, be like, oh, I have to kill him, but I kind of like him, you know. And the women have to go for him because he's got to bed down so many women, and not just because you know he likes to get laid, which who doesn't, right? Uh, no, it's it's be, because uh, he needs to get in somewhere sometimes, and sometimes doing that must be to manipulate a woman to get into maybe a husband who's the bad guy, whatever. So he's got to be that. He just can't, he can't be like me. No one's gonna believe me as James Bond, right? So the the the, the smarts, the the suaveness, sophistication, if you will, that goes with suaveness. And the last thing, toughness. He's got to be able to fight. He's got to be able to kick some ass. He's got to be able to be convincing as a black belt, a tenth degree black belt, if you will, uh, just a great MMA fighter. I mean, everything. He's got to be able to just beat pe people up at will. People bigger than him, and he's going to be able to hold his own. So, you know, Barry Nelson, he, he looks kind of short and kind of rugged. Maybe, I'm not sure. Again, with, with, with the way it was filmed, I, I, I can't get, uh, uh, you know, too much of a, uh, you know, uh, a gauge if he, if he did that. But uh, Barry Nelson's number eight, Casino Royale 1954 live television show. Number seven, David Niven. You might say David Niven played James Bond when? The only thing James Bond in Casino Royale, the 1967 standalone film, it was it was a comedy. And actually, when Ian Fleming wrote James Bond in 1953, when he started writing 
the first one was Casino Royale, actually. He um, he envisioned someone like David Niven. Now, I don't know how David Niven was in 1953. Maybe he was tougher, but by 1967, uh, he didn't convey any of the toughness. Suave, yes. Smart, yes. Sophisticated. Part of the suave, sophisticated, uh, you know, dual threat there. Uh, yes, no, he, he, he did convey that. But toughness, no, he looks like he, he couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. But it was a comedy, and it even had, had Peter S Sellers was in it, uh, and Woody Allen was in it. He played uh, he played uh, James Bond's nephew, Jimmy Bond. Uh, stupid, I know. And it, it just, uh, 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 again, uh, in a version of Casino Royale, that uh, you, if you've seen the Daniel Craig version, you've seen the best version of De Casino Royale. Uh, the, the, this was probably better than the Barry Nelson, uh, you know, uh, version of it, 1954, only because it was a comedy. It kind of reminds me of uh, What's New Pussycat, the 1964 comedy, I think, with uh, Peter Sellers. I mean, yeah, Peter Sellers was in it, and uh, Peter O'Toole, and uh, Woody Allen again. So it was uh, kind of like that same team looked like they probably made this. I don't know. It was... Uh, not that very good in a standalone film, and I guess another company had another production company had the rights to Casino Royale, so they decided to make it in between, you know, in the middle of uh, what uh, Sean Connery was doing. Well, at the end of what Sean Connery was doing at that time. Okay, so that that's those two out of the way. Just okay, wash them away. Don't even think about them too much. Number six. Uh, these are the top six. What uh, most of us remember, George. Lazenby, Lazenby, 1969 on Her Majesty's Secret Service. He only did one film. Uh, I think George Lazenby wasn't bad. I think uh, anybody who played from here on up is is, is a good James Bond. A, a good, you know, a uh, you know, a good pick for James Bond. I thought he was good. He he was the only Australian to ever play the part. Um, I, I think the movie was good too. He he got married. Uh, in the movie, he was the only wife that James Bond ever had, uh, I think, I'm sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's the only time James Bond got married on film, uh, I think it was a good film, I don't think it was bad, I think it came at the end of Sean Connery, he didn't want to do it anymore, and they hired George Lazenby, and I think he was a good pick, I think he could have kind of played him for years, but I heard there was a rift between him and the producers, and Afterwards, he grew his hair kind of long and grew a beard, and they didn't think that was a good uh, impression of what Bond was, you know. Uh, a lot of actors, when they were playing Bond, they were probably pushed to stay within character of Bond and not go out and do many things. If you notice, not a lot of actors on this list had a big career before Bond or during Bond. Many of them had a career after Bond, but, uh, I mean, some did. Roger Moore had a career be before Bond, but not really much during Bond or after Bond. So... Uh, I don't know. It seemed like people wanted Bond to have a, a, a certain uh, appeal during the time he played Bond. But I don't know. I guess they didn't like what George Lazenby did, and they never hired him again. Which, But I think that was a mistake because I think he was suave. He Smartness? I don't know. I don't really, really, I can't wait with one movie. And, and he did get married, which isn't very smart to me. Uh, and anyway, but he was tough as shit. He, he looked tough. He was tall. He he, he he fit the part. So, I don't know. I, I think he could have did a better job if he's hired for more, but he wasn't. Number five, Timothy Dalton. People remember him. I actually like Timothy Dalton as an actor. I liked him in, in some other f films he's been in, like The Rocketeer. And, uh, I think, you know, he, he's cast in some movies that are not very good, but I actually think he, he's not a bad actor. And uh, as Bond, I, I liked him, but he was he was after Roger Moore, after the joking, tongue in cheek Roger Moore's Bond, uh, the the kind of uh, always goes one one liners, and his Bond was much different. And they, I guess, it decided to be a more serious Bond, less uh, womanizing Bond, and they hired Timmy Dillon, who was certainly very serious, uh, kind of wooden actually, if you ask me, but. He was from 1987 to 89, two films. The first film was pretty good. I actually liked the first film. Uh, the second one was not as good. And uh, 
that, that was it. That was the end, end of him. But uh, there was a rumor going around that when they hired Roger Moore back in 1973, they were talking about Timothy Dalton, which I found it hard to believe because he was young and I, I, he was an, an, a nobody. So I find it hard to believe. They were talking about that when they finally, when they did hire him, they were saying, oh, we wanted to hire him back in 1973, which I, I find hard to believe. That's one of those, I think, urban myths may, maybe that didn't exist because I don't see him in 1973. He was too young, and I don't think he was no, known enough to play Bond, and I don't think they did it. I think they were just telling us that. And see how you don't hear about that anymore because after he, you know, he kind of faded after two movies, and then he was gone. But I actually think he wasn't that bad in the role. But the movies weren't, let's say, great. And his performance was kind of wooden. But maybe that was just the dialogue, the way it was written. I don't know. Number four. Pierce Brosnan, 1995 to 2002. Four films. Uh, Pierce Brosnan, I like Pierce Brosnan. He was suave as anything. Sophisticated, definitely has that in spades. Smart, yes, he came across as smart. Toughness, I don't know. Maybe he's a little slim for the role. I don't know. Was he conveying a black belt? And I don't know if he did that. Conveying an MMA star and conveying somebody who could get down and dirty. I don't know. He was a little very sophisticated. Probably the most sophisticated Bonds uh, we've had. You know, he looks great in a tux, 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 cedar. And, uh, and they actually said they, and of course, when he was hired, they said they wanted him before Timothy Dalton, but but they got Timothy Dalton because Pierce Brosnan was doing Remington Steel. Again, another thing that people like, like, the people like to say, well, at the time, you know, but they hyped that up when they hired him, but after he faded out eventually, they didn't mention it again. But it seems like one of those things where I don't believe what any time a director or producers say, we wanted him before. No, no, no. Just hire him now and say, we. We got a good bond. Don't say we wanted to hire him before the last bond, who was bad, because then you're disrespecting the last bond. You know, it, it's not cool. And you're going to keep on doing it every single film. You're going to say, well, actually, now that we got, uh, you know, uh, Daniel Craig, we really didn't want, you know, let's come, come on, stop doing that. I hate when people say that. Why don't you just say, we hired him, uh, we wanted to change bond, we, we hired somebody who we think fits into bond. The bond we want to represent now. That, that's it. <laughs> Don't disrespect the last bond. That, that's not cool. So P.S. Brosnan's number four, 1995-2002, was in four films. Uh, the films got pro progressively worse. The first one was really good. Really, I mean, uh, I, I, I was, uh, I loved the first, I loved the villains in the first film. Uh, what's her name? Anna Top, uh, the Russian, she was sexy as hell. She was tough. I, I you know, I was... Definitely loved the first film. It was in by the fourth film with in Iceland with the invisible car. It it it, it got stupid. Uh, Holly Berry and the Asian guy turning white or something. It was just it was just stupid. It was just and then he he's going down a glacier where he's snowboarding or something, or uh, uh, parasailing or something. It was just stupid. It was just idiotic. And I think at that point. I was like, yeah, we, we, we got to change. And again, it's not Timothy Dalton's fault. It was just screenplay. It was just, it was just shite. And at that point, I guess they wanted to change. Timothy Dalton had become a, a joke as Bond at that point. And he wanted to change Bond and, and the whole you know direction of the series, which, okay, he want to get a new actor in there. But Timothy Dalton still to this day is the only Bond who had a career before Bond, a big career before Bond, a big career during Bond. He was doing other things like... Uh, um, um, Mrs. Doubtfire, and he has a career after Bond that's still going today. Probably not so strong now, but directly after Bond, he made some some really good films. So he he he's the only Bond who I think has a career before, during, and after Bond. And he's 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 he didn't really need Bond. So when he got fired, he probably maybe he wasn't as upset as uh, as uh, maybe other Bonds have been. Number three uh, was my Bond that Bond I grew up on. Roger Moore. A lot of people say uh, he was the worst Bond. A lot of people say, oh, he wasn't tough enough. He doesn't. He has the smarts. He seemed like he had smarts. He had the charm and sophistication, probably as much as Pierce Brosnan did when it comes to charm. I mean, when he was, you know, then, uh, and, and he's like, I'll have a, a uh, what, what is it? Uh, shaken that stood, martini. Shaken that stood. Uh, you know, 
he seemed like he was in his element. Toughness, uh, he looked like he, he was like David Niven. He looked like he couldn't really fight his, his way out of a, a paper bag. And those fight scenes were kind of comical. But he played the whole thing for laughs. So I kind of liked Roger Moore because it was this tongue-in-cheek kind of approach to it. And uh, some of the movies were like, I mean, I think by the end of it, it became ridiculous. When he did A View to a Kill, when he was like 57, he was older than me. When he's, it was kind of kind of sad at that point. But his first couple of films were really good. I mean, The Man with the Golden Gun, uh, Never Let Die. The stunts were increasingly ridiculous, but again, it was it was kind of filmed. It was like made as tongue in cheek. Like, don't take this too seriously. The Spy Who Loved Me was his best outing. That was nineteen seventy seven. Barbara Bach was the perfect Bond girl. I thought she was one of the sexiest Bond girls and one of the sexiest women who you know in Hollywood at that. I mean, I think one of the sexiest women. And even now, she's been married to. That troll Ringo Starr, but hey, he's Ringo Starr, so he, he he's cool. He, he's Ring, I mean Ringo, what can I say? But she was married to him for many years now, and uh, she she's sexy as hell. She was great in that movie, and um, I actually liked. Uh, that was one of my favorite. I mean, I remember that film. I was like eleven when that came out. I was in the sort of movie theater, and I loved the car he had. I I just loved everything about. It. That was my Bond. Roger Moore was my Bond. So maybe you, if he's not your Bond, you might put him lower on the list. You probably would. But I have him as number three because he's my bond, and I grew up on him. I grew, you know, he's made seven films. He made seven films, so he he's made, you know, tied with, with the most amount of Bond films by any actor. And you know, again, at the end of it, it became a little sad and pathetic. But but I did like Roger Moore as Bond. Again, that's my childhood Bond. Number two, Daniel Craig. 2006 till now, 2021, the next movie's coming out, which is, I guess, was supposed to be filmed a while ago, but because of COVID, I guess, he's been in five films now. We're going to release the next one next year. Uh, Daniel Craig, number two. Daniel Craig, uh, when I heard he was going to be, I'm like, who's this blonde guy going to be? James Bond, this is wrong. I didn't like it, but after I saw the first movie, I was sold. I think he's done a great job with it. The second film sucked. Uh, Solace uh, of Solitude, what is it? Solace of Solitude, something of Solitude. Hated it. Garbage. The third film was good. Uh, the fourth film, Spectre, was all right. You know, he's making a good film every other film. So he's up for a big film now. The fifth, the, the first was good. The third was good. The fifth, if you go by every other film, I think the fifth is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Daniel Craig, uh, number two. I like Daniel Craig as an actor, too. I think he's done some... Interesting things outside of Bond, and and before Bond, he he, he was in Rope Edition, played uh, Paul Newman's son, and w was uh, in Munich. He played one of the uh, the 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 the, uh, the good guys in Munich. One of the uh, the Israelis who were going to kill all those, uh, I guess, Muslims. I don't know what really. Uh, it was a long time ago I watched that film, film, but that was a good film. He was in. So Daniel Craig, number two. Uh, 2006, still going, five movies, and uh, I think he's just holding on part as long as he can. I know he quit after the fourth one, only to come back for this one. They probably pull, <laughs> pulled up on a driveway with a, uh, a fuckload of cash and like a dump truck and just dumped it on his, uh, you know, driveway. Yes, I will be in another Bond. Number one, Sean Connery. You, 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 you gotta, you gotta give it. To the man who just died. Uh, rest in peace, Sean. Godspeed to you. Great actor. Fantastic actor. Had not much of a career before Bond. Not too much of a career during Bond, but a hell of a career after Bond. He became way more famous than Bond. And in my book, still the best Bond. And in many of people's books, still the Bond. What, what the prototype, even though Aim Fleming pictured a David Niven, I think we all picture a, a Sean Connery. 1962 to 1967. Then he came back in 1971 for uh, Diamonds of Forever after George Lazenby did his in 1969. Then he came back in 1983 for a kind of a standalone film, uh, Never Say Never Again, with Kim Basinger. I I saw that. It was all right. I mean, in, in the middle of, there was like, he, he that film was released and then like at the same time, uh, you know, uh, it was a Roger Moore film. So I don't know why he came back. To do it. Uh, I don't know why they even made it. It wasn't a horrible film, but I didn't think it was a necessary film. He's been in seven movies. If you 
include that that one. So that's my list. A couple of things I want to say about Bond. Uh, I don't think they, he should have made uh, 1983's uh, uh, Never Say Never Again. I think that was not not it wasn't needed. Uh, I actually think that that uh, that they're talking about having an African American Bond. I mean, a black guy. Okay, not not African American. It could be you know African, European, African, British, what have you. A black Bond or a female Bond. I think those are both mistakes. You got to keep it what it is. It's a white guy, guy who 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 you know. If you're Bond and you're a black guy, there's not as many blacks in the world as are whites, so you're going to be easier to spot, let's say. Especially in some countries that there's not a lot of you know, blacks in these countries, so it, it would it would be like, oh, that's James Bond, it's easy. We know what James Bond looks like. We're doing something nefarious. You could just imagine, you know, a, a, a spy for, from, uh, you know, MI6 being here. That's, boom, th this guy. And a woman, uh, again, the same thing. It would be a little ridiculous. I think you should just keep a white British guy, or, you know, a white Australian guy, okay, a white, uh, you know, an um, Irish guy, a Welsh guy, whatever. But he should be a white guy. Again, I'm just saying that's where the character was, was written. I think that, that you know, and I'm, uh, you know, uh, again, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to, uh, you know, put, put a white guy playing Shaft, are you? No. Again, I'm not saying anything against, you know, anybody, any black person or any uh, w w woman. I'm just saying... This is the way the character was written. I mean, even a bat, 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 Batman. I mean, the Black Panther was written with, with a black character in mind. That makes, of course, you're going to hire a black guy. Okay, the same thing with this. I, I, that's just my opinion on it. I think that was a bad idea to even think about something like that. It's like, that, that's just, that's just j j j foolishness. And you might get some new uh, fans, but, but you lose a lot of fans who will be like, I'm not interested in this adoption of, uh, you know, uh, James Bond. That, that's my opinion. Uh, Bond's been going for a long time. Like I said, 27 films, if you add a, in the other uh, offshoot films, and a live television show. So 28, you know, depictions of Bond on screen, I guess. Uh, and, you know, it, it's getting long in the tooth. So I think I'm really looking forward to 2021's film, but I'm looking forward to it for a few reasons. One is, I hope it's it's better than, you know, not to say that Spectre was bad, but it's getting a little, form, you know, it's gotten very, you know, formulaic. And uh, I think Daniel Craig is doing a good job of it, but it's getting kind of old and stale. So I wouldn't mind uh, maybe something like Bourne. I mean, when, when, when you know, Matt Damon played Jason Bourne, I think he really did really well. The, the four Bourne films, I think it was, well, three with, three with him in it, or four with him in it? I do four with him in it, and one with uh, whoever the other actor is, I forget. That, that wasn't as good. But I think he did a good job at playing Bourne, which is how you might see Sean Connery, I mean, not Sean Connery, James Bond maybe should go that way, but I, I don't know, because he also got to have the, the tuxedo on, uh, you know, having a mixed drink and having a woman be checking him out. That that's just what what Bond needs. So that's my list of uh, the top my top eight Bonds uh, out of the eight. And uh, again, uh, number eight Barry Nelson, one one blog TV show, 1954. Number seven David Niven, one movie, 1967. George Lazenby, one movie, 1969. Timothy Dalton, two movies, uh, 1987 to 1989. Pierce Brosnan, four movies, 1995 to, 19, to 2002. Roger Moore, seven movies, 1973 to 1985, 87? What is that? What did I write down? 85. Um, Daniel Craig, 2006 to 2021, five films. And Sean Connery, seven films, 62 to 67, 1971, and 1983. That's my list. Uh, maybe you could watch this and, and put some comments in on what you think. I'm sure, like I said, people are going to have Roger Moore way down on the list and maybe uh, Timmy D. Dalton or Chris Brosnan higher on the list. If you are, just write them in. Uh, anyway, this is J.P. Alexander for the Rabbit Dogs Unleashed. And uh, until <laughs> next time, uh, I'm trying to think of a good line from a James Bond movie. Uh, I can't think of one, so be shaken, that's good. I, I don't.
I don't know. Uh, uh, anyway, ciao.